welcome dear six semester cbcs students to today's new online class uh, today's uh, paper uh, we are dealing with is your modern european drama now under modern european drama the play i am doing is the caucasian chalk circle and now modern european drama you know it it includes um, different uh, sub genres of drama there are realistic plays naturalistic plays, symbolist plays, expressionistic plays and now we have this Caucasian chalk circle by Bartle Brett. Uh, now which comes under the genre epic theatre. Okay, so this modern period was characterized by a lot of experimentations. Experimentations in drama in different parts of Europe, different countries of Europe. Now, one of those experiments were going on in uh, was going on in Germany, in the hands of Bartle Brecht and his comrade Arwin Piscutter. That experimentation led to the development of what Bartle Brecht called epic theatre, and later on he called them dialectical theatre as well. So, be, to, in order to understand the Caucasian chalk circle, we should have a solid idea of what epic theatre. Or dialectical theater is. In addition, we should know about a particular concept which is integral to uh, Brecht's epic theater. This is the A effect or alienation effect. So let's first start with epic theater. Now the term itself is interesting. Like your say lyrical ballads, two different uh, the lyrical and the narrative are put together there. Lyrical ballads of Warsaw and Collins. Similarly here what Brecht is doing is he is making a blend, a fuse of two different um, genres. Epic is the narrative genre we know and theatre is the dramatic genre. So he blends them. He, he is of the opinion that uh, epic has or uh, dramatic elements and drama also has epic elements. So they can be blended. He successfully does so. That kind of drama which came out of Germany during the modern period of drama is called epic theatre. So now uh, so it is it is a narrative theater the stage begins to tell a story there is an enactment and at the same time there is a telling as well so uh, that, that is that is the kind of drama so it's narrative theater and because it is it, it is concerned with big social issues this theater is for social change not for individual change hence it this kind of narrative narrative, narrative drama is called epic theater or the german term for which is epiches theater now, epic, epic theater later on he called dialectical theater now why now initially uh, Bartle Brick was of the opinion that drama should be for instruction only not for entertainment but later on in his dramatic career he realized that realizes that there should be some entertainment as well but that emotional uh, attachment should be restrained should be checked so there is an in, uh, emotional identification of the audience with the with the play and the characters must be restrained because if there is emotional identification to the fullest there will be no thinking so epic theater is meant to uh, educate it is instructive theater a theater for instruction theater for social change so and it is communist a theater aimed at uh, changing the capitalist society so it is a theater uh, which is thought provoking uh, which makes us think so in for that to happen the realistic uh, manner of uh, emotional identification of the audience with the characters and the actor with the character have to be uh, checked and restrained for that he uses what is called the alienation effect the german term for which is warfremdung effect now because there is an interplay between emotional identification and detachment he calls his place dialectical theater he later called his place dialectical theater dialectics in philosophy we know is the way of uh, uh, trying to uh, explore truth by placing opposing arguments together by 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 contesting opposing uh, arguments what is called thesis antithesis and synthesis so that kind of a dialectics you will find in epic theater and primarily there is primarily there is this interplay between emotional attachment and, and detachment epic theater has uh, how is this uh, a effect realized so a effect alienation to alienate means to make make strains there has to be a distance distanciation defamiliarization distanciation between the audience and the 
character and the actor and the character for that certain uh, techniques are used so there, there there is the stage begins to tell a story there are scene titles which tell you that what's happening there uh, is not real life it, it, it's it's uh, the epic theater does not aim to create an illusion it has obvious theatricality uh, then uh, songs and ballads are used to break the emotional identification emotional identification is snapped at crucial moments a direct address there, there can be a narrator there are masks used uh, of course song 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 songs and ballads are there then uh, there is historicizing contemporary issues are uh, uh, explored with the help of history uh, there are split characters uh, all all these uh, help in alienation uh, um, alienation or far from them and that kind of a theater which uses alienation and which is for social change which is a marxist kind of theater which uses uh, things like obvious theatricality uses mass songs and ballads uh, split characters historicizing and that kind of a theater is called the epic theater now the Caucasian chalk circle is uh, uh, breaks one of one of his uh, plays which is also uh, part of this genre called the epic theater or dialectical theater which also uses a effect now coming to the title title of the uh, play the Caucasian chalk circle now this title actually comes from uh, two sources we have first the uh, biblical story of King Solomon when two, two, two women claim the same child Solomon how did Solomon do justice he ordered the child to be cut into two pieces and given to the two, two women one of the women uh, withdrew her claim because she did not want to hurt the child that woman was given the child because it proved that uh, she has to be the real real mother because she does not want to hurt the child then there is a Chinese uh, story a Chinese play in fact uh, where uh, Brecht saw a uh, certain uh, different, differently placed uh, story. What happens there? The, uh, the child is not ordered to be cut into pieces, but a circle is drawn, a soft chalk circle. The child is put in the middle. The mothers are asked to the mothers are asked to drag them. The mother that uh, withdrew the claim did not want to drag and hurt the child. She is given the child. That is the Chinese story. Here it is the Caucasian chalk circle. It is the Caucasian version. The Caucasus is that region in uh, Russia, Georgia, that, that area. This play is, the setting is setting of the play is the Caucasus region. And uh, post Second World War, the Nazis have been defeated. That is the setting. There, what happens? That Solomon story and the Chinese story here gets a twist. There is a Brechtian twist to the story, twist to the tale. What happens here? What happens is uh, what the uh, stuff of this uh, play is. The play has a prologue. Which is the uh, frame story. This prologue is about who should land go to. The prologue, the scene one, the title, scene title. We said epic theater has scene titles. Uh, this uh, Prologue is titled uh, the battle for the or the fight for the uh, valley. So the question there is who should the valley go to? When that is decided, there is a celebration. Uh, a singer has been uh, invited. He 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 tells a tale. He narrates a tale. So that is epic theater in in in, in being, in in form and content. That is epic theater. Narrating narrating it narrating it. It is a theatrical performance. And at the same time, there is a singer. There is the narrator. Who is narrating, uh, addressing the audience directly, and also narrating what is going on? So, uh, so we see what epic theater is through the uh, doings of this singer. What is the tale that he tells? He actually tells two tales: story of the child and story of the judge. Those two tales are about who should the child go to. So the prologue or the frame tale. So Caucasian chalk circle is a frame tale, also. It is a parable play. It is a story with a moral. The, fr uh, the frame tale is about who should land go to, and we, we, we come to know that land should go to those who will take care of the land. 
those who will not merely exploit the land for more and more profits so what he is actually Brecht is actually telling us is that he is supporting the socialist system led by Russia there is also this issue of Germany after Second World War the being uh, fought for by the United States bloc and the USSR bloc West Germany and East Germany who should the land go to Brecht's sympathies are with the socialistic system which is the prologue then the inside story or the two stories the noble child story and the story of the judge that is about who should the child go to the child should go to the, the woman who takes care of him now here in this twist that the woman who is given the child and who is supposed to take care of the child is not the biological mother this is the modern twist actually the biological mother is claiming the child because of her self-interest because if the child is not with her she cannot inherit her husband's late husband's wealth and property that is why she is claiming that child earlier she had actually neglected the child the maid who take, took care of the child selflessly facing all the troubles and pains it is she who does not drag the child though she is not the uh, biological mother she is given the child by the eccentric, eccentric judge so that is the story that is the twist to the tale so who should land go to who should chi the child go to so that that is what the uh, um, play is about the themes of the play are of course socio-economic system capitalism versus socialism that is one of the themes nationalism also should land should go to those who belong to the land then so theme number one capitalism versus socialism second uh, nationalism then womanhood or motherhood Capitalism versus socialism, nationalism, motherhood, war is an important theme. War, that war is a business actually. War is a syndicate, that kind of an idea is given here. War is for the benefit of some. Then inequalities. Social inequalities are shown in the play. So Capitalism versus socialism, so socio-economic system is a theme, nationalism is a theme, then uh, motherhood is a theme, war is a theme, inequality is a theme, and corruption is also a very important theme. So, as far as the genre is concerned, it is a big play, it uses alienation effects, title comes from that uh, uh, Chinese story, which has an antecedent in the Solomonic story, then of course there is the Caucasian twist. Setting is uh, Caucasus region after 1945, after the defeat of the Nazis. Then as far as the themes are concerned, these themes we have just mentioned. Then structure of the play, prologue, there is a frame tale. Uh, within it there are two inset stories. What are, do, what are those? That uh, prologue is about who should the land go to. Then the other two stories are who should the child go to. That story of the child and then the story of uh, the judge then that what are the scenes the first scene fight for the valley we said which is the prologue Se scene scene two story of the noble child how the noble child was neglected by the mother abandoned then taken away by taken and uh, secured by uh, the maid then the flight into the no northern mountains how in the midst of the rebellion when the governor was beheaded and the governor's wife escaped the maid took the child to her brother's home in the northern mountains, flight to the northern mountain. Then what she faced in the father's, in her brother's house, she had to uh, constantly uh, uh, face questions about her uh, um, child. Her respectability was questioned. She had, she had to be married to an invalid who was actually pretending to be invalid to escape the conscription for the war that was taking place in Persia. When the, he, she, had, she was married. So that, that kind of uh, hypocrisy religion and hypocrisy yeah, that also is there religion and hypocrisy is also a theme the noble noble lady she is a maid 
it's her her uh, uh, virtue is question then the stay in the mountains there later on what happens then comes the story of the judge how the eccentry as that the village clerk becomes the judge under very strange circumstances uh, and he is a split character which you see in a bit uh, he, he is a he, he is a divine sort of a character but he comes up with the pro right judgments pro poor judgments uh, that is the split in his character and how he becomes the judge uh, how he helped the duke unknowingly escape during the rebellion later he offers himself to be punished but he elected to be the judge and then the duke comes back and makes makes him the judge at the at the particular point when he was to be actually uh, thrown out thrown out then came the uh, finally the chalk circle so what are, what are the and then uh, while uh, giving giving the child to the maid grusha he also mistakenly delivers the uh, delivers uh, the uh, sentence divorcing uh, grusha and the invalid while actually he was uh, pronouncing on the divorce petition by 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 an old couple so that was a comedy of errors at the end so these are the scenes the fight for the valid which is the prologue then the story of the noble child flight into the northern mountains then the uh, stay in the northern mountains then the story of the judge and then finally the chalk circle so this is the play in a nutshell and I hope all these points, if this gives you a roadmap, a roadmap actually, these are the areas you need to look into while preparing the uh, play for your exams. Um, a very enlightening play, new kind of a play for you, epic theatre, uh, uh, the stage is telling you a story, themes, very modern relevant themes with a twist to the plot. Uh, the title we have, dis uh, we have discussed, setting characters of course the child is a uh, child is an important character Grusha is an important her lover uh, Simon Sasawa is an important character uh, Lavrenti is a brother the governor is there his wife a greedy wife uh, shallow and greedy then the fat prince the grand duke and Azdak is an important character so this is this is what the play is I hope this uh, this uh, class will be of help to you uh, in your uh, endeavor or in your um, exploring of the uh, of the play so uh, thank you um, I hope it helps you in your further exploration of the play goodbye for now